out that oh, probably a lot of people will forget about him because it has been like 40 years ago. Uh, but the book that he wrote could probably ignite some interest among the young players to know that during our time in the 70s, there was this coach that we had that could be equal to the great Jose Moriano, Alex Ferguson, to all the, the best coaches in the world. We had one in our midst and uh, sadly, you know, the association did not make use of his talent. I have some special uh, points about what I thought about Andrew Chu that made him uh, Singapore's greatest coach. Four points come to mind. Number one, uh, he required us to sing the national anthem before each training session. Uh, he said that he wanted us to be patriotic. Uh, he wanted us to feel proud when we donned the national colours. Uh, for that could translate into uh, some meaningful points for us. Uh, it probably would give us another 10 to 15 percent more gains. Uh, what could make the difference between winning or losing? He could uh, inspire us without telling us anything. Let me explain. Uh, we were playing against this team and the game was going nowhere. And uh, he called one of the players to warm up, you know, uh, along the sideline. And when we saw who the player was, it was a forward. So one of us, uh, Lola, myself, Raja, or Manu, one of us has to come out because he was a forward. So what do you think we should do? We all double up played with spirit, scored two goals and won. And after the game, he was still warming up. So when he went up to Uncle Chu and said, why did you feel me, you know, uh, why did you ask me to uh, warm up along the sideline? He said, you have served my turn. There was one game in Kedah where the fans of Kedah carried a banner that said, Bata thinks on me what that meant, What that meant was to break my leg. He did not feel me for the game. I didn't understand why. Perhaps he thought that I was frightened. And indeed I was, because you know, the, ba the banner was big and you know, uh, clearly stated that no, break my leg. The game wore on and uh, after 70 minutes of the game, when I wanted so badly to go in and help my teammates, Uncle Chu came to me and said, okay, I think you can go in now. I was so fired up, I beat beyond myself, I think, scored the goal, you know, and we won. And that was how he could tell whether you can give your best not by just looking at you. Finally, it was the Malaysia Cup final in 1977 where we played Penang uh, at the Merdeka Stadium. He said, you know, Kip Song, I have prepared this game so well that I think we will come out uh, victorious without sounding, you know, like overly confident and so on. And then he said, uh, go out and show what you all can do. So we scored an early goal uh, and that to calm the nerves of the players because you know after one goal uh, in a cup final you feel a bit more confident of leaving by one deal but on a wet and slippery surface we made two mistakes that allowed Penang to score two goals and uh, I was thinking back then I said my god perhaps you know, we will lose again you know, right at the last moment but Uncle Chu then made two changes that were telling he took out Samad and replaced Samad with Peng Sai, who steadied the defence and prevented them from scoring again. So that was one of the changes that he made. In fact, when we went back to the dressing room up at half time, we told Gunnison and all the other officials not to go into the room. You know why? Because he was going to replace the captain and probably there will be interference by the officials. Probably. That's why he told, I want to be with my players alone. And secondly, I think when we were going nowhere and the game was like going to end, he brought in the crazy horse, Nasi Jalil, in place of Raja Gopal who was tiring quite fast. And he scored the equalizer. And then, you know, uh, when the game went to extra time, Uncle Chu came to us. We were being uh, massaged, you know, by Justin Moray and all the, you know, those the officials helping us to get Ourself prepared for the next 30 minutes. He said, Kim Song, uh, he didn't tell me Kim Song only told the rest of the team there. I think he said, I think we will win this final. So I asked Uncle, why do you say that? He said, I, I train you guys to play for three hours. You look at the Malaysian players, you look at the Penang players, 
they're having cramps, they're having these and then and so on. So I think looking at all these things, uh, we have a better chance. And uh, we were given a free kick right outside the penalty box. And that was where Dula Tassim and I trained to perfect that cross for, from Dula to me. And it was done so well that you know I scored the winning goal. So that's how good the guy is. Uh. Okay, he made he made the change to replace the captain. That was something which I think not many coaches would do. But if this this all these changes could have gone wrong though. If it had been walloped, say, you know, seven or eight zero. But I, I suppose a great coach is a coach that will, that is willing to make changes as and when he thinks he should do and he did that perfectly and we were so grateful to him. We wanted to do this to honor him. I mean, for what he has done for, to Singapore football, you know, bringing glory when we were, you know, in the doldrums and so on, not winning the Malaysia Cup for 12 years. I think these are the things that we want people to know. You don't have dedicated officials like Anne Garnison, Michael Ku. At that time, I had a group of officials that all share the same objective to make Singapore football better and to be somewhere, in, you know, in Asia. That's the difference between the officials nowadays and the days of Garrison time. I don't think that these people that are in charge there, they are not hungry enough to want us to improve. Because if you look back in the last 30, 40 years, we became, we had become worse. Every match when we played at the National Stadium during the 70s, we could get 70,000 at the stadium and a few hundred thousand more watching live from their TV sets at home. Uh, we could galvanize the people to cheer us as one united people, people from all walks of life. And I think football, uh, in the in the early years of our independence, in the early years of our independence, we helped the old man, Lee Kuan Yew, to unite the people. How? By getting people from all walks of life strong at the stadium to watch us play. So that's how we, you know, could get the people together. We helped, we helped the, the Prime Minister then. T.W. Walker said, I will get the Prime Minister to come and shake hands with all of you guys huh? after we won the Malaysia Cup at the Istana. He came, he, he went through, he went through me. Huh? He didn't shake my hand, you know what? Get long hair. Right? And at that time, it was the NTDP campaign. So myself and Dola, we never shook our hands. So I, I couldn't understand why. And then I realized later on that you know, this guy, he gives no quarter to anyone, huh? not even to his family. Huh? <laughs> yeah, he didn't shake our hands. <laughs> I think if you are interested enough and you want to be somebody, you want to excel and especially now when you look at the EPL, the Bundesliga and so on, I am sure that there is enough incentive now for these young people to want to be somewhere out there. And you have a coach for Uncle Chu, willing to sacrifice, willing to work hard. You can make that kind of money, not here, but going abroad. And I, 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 I kind of applaud this guy, Fandi. You know, you, you stay here, you will die. Yeah. I played with my brother. Uh, uh, there, there was one game, uh, four of us were in the team. First level, uh, four of us. <laughs> my parents were no sportsmen. You know how we became sportsmen. It started with Jim Bang, uh, our second brother, who played against the British in the days. Uh, started with him. And he was the first one to be trained by Uncle I'm not sure what his techniques were. I, I think he has got a pair of eyes that you can see uh, whether you are aware of the surrounding that you're playing with uh, and whether before the ball comes to you, you will know what to do already, you will have options. Things like that I think are important to him. Yet uh, one of the methods that he used to help us shoot with some power and accuracy is such that he will take 20 leather balls dip it into water overnight and then the next day's training will be putting the ball at a 30 meter mark to shoot and when you shoot the ball from a 30 meter distance soaked in water it is so heavy the ball hardly travels so we asked uncle Chu, why are you torturing us they just continue doing it and i'll tell you why later so after the 10 balls that we uh, train with he moved the ball from 40 meters to 30 meters to 20 meters within shooting distance of goal. 
and then he removed all the wet balls and brought the actual ball for us to shoot and guess what we were whacking the ball until the goalkeeper was afraid to catch the ball that was his psychology you know? first soak the ball make it heavy and when the actual thing comes into play he brought the actual ball in and we were like shooting the ball like rockets off the ball so on you must know where to go so he has the he has the knack of looking at things like that uh, and and trying to get the best out of each one of us he, he can get the best he can get the best out of each of us uh, by studying what we like what we don't and incentivizing you with a lot of things you know? he has got a shop called uncle chu sports uh, in 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 plaza singapura he was the agent for deodora he will give some uh, people who he think has got potential in football who can't afford a pair of boots and he will give to them but pay me when you can that's the kind of person he is he knows the state of the person's uh, welfare no money but he can see the potential in his guy hey, come to my shop and just take what you want and that's where i think he will go win the hearts of the players